definitely keep the questions flowing as the stream goes on. Like at any point, interject any questions. You know, obviously, if you can keep it related to what we're talking about at the moment, that makes things much more fluid, makes it a lot easier. And yes, Donk Swampy, that would be the place. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you got something that's a little off the cuff, if I can fit it in at the same time, we will. Just keep the questions rolling and we'll get to them. Without further ado, jumping right into it. Top five fall baits for smallmouth. You get to go first again, sir. And again, we're not going through like, this is our number one. This is our number two. We're just, these are our top five with some honorable mentions that are like, without a shadow of a doubt, this is going to get bit at some point, like basically right now for the next four to six weeks. And then some of these will get bit right through into December too. Yeah, like number one. Like number one? Was that what we said number Depen one? Yeah, depending on what they're biting or what they're doing. Jerkbait. They jerk bait to jerk bait works all year round. I pretty much only throw jerk baits in the spring and in the fall and leave the rest of the summer for big baits and jigs and fun stuff. Jerk baits I I haven't really thrown any of the real deeping diving jerk baits, or at least been super successful with it. Which is kind of funny because like right now would be ideal for that given the way we find everything else but we've we've only thrown the 110 plus twos in the spring mm -hmm. yeah i mean you have and i i still stuck with the regular diet like regular 110 and obviously he i think he may have caught in a little more than me a couple but but one of the only things i've done better than you <laughs> <but> with <laughs> the jerk bait just the regular 110 or any regular like i don't know what do you what would you say average depth of these would be like five to five six to feet six, yeah. that's so uh, that's the mega bass vision 110 those are well four to six feet i think is what they're advertised six, as maybe four five to, to six something like that and that that's like a phenomenal depth to target regardless of what brand and size and style you go with but suspending jerk bait is pretty much what right. we only throw the smallmouth in the fall they're not going to be down super deep anymore they're starting to make their way up work their way up into a little shallower i don't know, say probably 10 15 feet late fall late fall not right now right now you can still get away with throwing a deep hey now foreshadowing <laughs> 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 you can get away with throwing that those deeper diving plus twos or any other like i don't know 10 to 12 15 foot diving jerk bait but deeper fall i like to go back to the normal because they're still they're pushed up they're feeding hard. You don't have to sit there, jerk this thing three times, and let it sit for 30 seconds like you do, like, ice in or ice out. Um, you can work these a lot faster, just constant twitching, pausing for a second or two, and then just snapping this thing seven, eight, ten times, pausing for a half a second. just Because I've caught more of my bigger fish just snapping the absolute crap out of these things pausing for a half second and then just continue to do 10 snaps, pause, 10 snaps, pause, and they just come up and absolutely inhale it. When you get down back like further in the fall towards ice in, the colder the water that gets, the longer you're going to want to let this pause. But we're coming up to that, that time of year where it's not summer and it's not freezing cold out. It's right in the middle where those fish are absolutely just feasting on everything. So, Jerkbait would definitely be tied on. I mean, it, yeah, it's absolutely tied on my drink mind. once, twice, I drink twice. <laughs> those, Double hook, drink those six hooks times. Are sticky. I yeah, I, know, I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said. And then now the the added benefit to fishing even the deeper ones. Do you have to? No. Um, but like a deep crankbait bite has been going off really well for a lot of people like fishing anything in that mid water column, whether it be something like an underspin or you throw in a uh, Tamiki rig, Okashira, spy bait, whatever a deeper diving jerk bait can get the most out of that bite as well. You can go, just go on and expand upon that while also giving something to them that not only gets down to that depth, but obviously pauses cause you're fishing something suspended. So it has that, and even if it doesn't like perfectly suspend, it's still not going to rock it up, say like a crankbait, and it's not going to just tank like it would anything else. Say spy baits, I mean they don't like tank on the fall, but they fall fairly fast. Um, you know, and like literally anything else with a weighted head, even if you're throwing a one twentieth ounce Ned rig, 
or a one twentieth ounce jig head on a swim bait, it's still going to fall faster than a really good suspending jerk bait is either going to sink or float. Uh, and the other important thing to remember, especially right now, even those smallmouth still deep, but now they're gravitating. Maybe not quite yet. Depends on the size of the body of water, but we are rapidly coming up to, or have started in some smaller bodies of water where they're gravitating out of like middle of the lake, deep water suspended over absolutely nothingness in hella deep water more towards the bank. If they're eventually going to start, if they haven't already gravitating back towards main lane, po main lake points back towards mainland doesn't mean that they're not still going to be deep because they're most likely are at least for the next several weeks, even though they're deep, they're still going to slap something way up on the surface. These fish will come up from 35 feet down and crush something 10 feet below the surface. Oh, They'll okay. slap a top water from 25 to 35 feet below the surface. So that's where the beauty of your jerk bait comes in. If you don't have any deep divers, if you don't like them, throw the 110. Depending upon what you're seeing for bait fish, that's your key indicator. Grab stuff that replicates that. And a jerk bait should absolutely be in your rotation as we go into this fall bite, which is essentially started now. That transition is definitely beginning with these slightly colder nights and the water temp very, very slowly, but steadily dropping on average week to week. Now's the time. So yeah, jerk bait, man. That's it, it. I don't have it in my rotation as much as I should in the fall, but it's becoming more of a norm for me. I, I only do because I caught one giant in the fall on a jerk bait working the absolute bejesus out of it. Um, Ever since then, I was like, okay, jerk bait in the fall. That's just, just what you do. And actually, it was really, really, the water was actually pretty freaking cold that day, I remember. That was late, I think that was late October, early November. That day with Kristen? Yeah. So you're probably down in the 50s already that, by that point, because that's a kettle pond. Yeah, it was cold. I remember feel, reaching down and grab, like feeling the water. I'm like, holy shit, it's freaking cold. <laughs> but I was still cranking. It was... Bluebird skies, sunny, but it was cold. A little bit of a, like a mouse fart breeze on the water. <laughs> and <laughs> this thing absolutely slayed. That was the same day that I caught that giant crappie. Uh, um, your state record? Yeah. Other, yeah, technically. <laughs> <laughs> um, jerk baits. Use them. Love yep. them. Learn them. Oh, David Roy, you got here just a smidgen late to hear the jerk bait discussion. He's, gonna, he's like, any, a... anything you said was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not throwing it on a thousand dollar mega bass combo, <laughs> you are wrong. Six foot three inch, three point three seven nine inch long rod. Yeah. Nine point three eight pound floral carbon <laughs> mega bass <laughs> that was soaked in holy water prior to <laughs> casting. Kiss by baby Jesus. <laughs> Throw up a Hail Mary in between every jerk. If you don't have that, jerk. just go home. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. All right, so jerk baits, number one. We love uh, you, not David. necessarily what? We love you, David. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily the number one, but certainly deserves its spot on the top five list for fall baits for smallmouth. Number two on the list, but again, not necessarily number two. We threw this all sorts of out of order. What did we say? Well, that was number three, four, five. Ah, oh, we don't have. Okay, I, you're going to have to excuse this rough. As long as it's JDM, it's probably right. All right, you're going to have to excuse this not quite accurate, but close enough. Demiki rig. So that's off a little bit, but you get the gist of it. So it's going to be a ball head style bait. I mean, Okashira jig is kind of a better representation of it. it just happens to have the screw head on it. And yeah, well, come on, camera, you can do it. Whatever, you're going to take. Here's the important thing. Hook, shank, right? At this point, I'm holding the shank. It is parallel, flat, parallel to lake bottom. Your line tie wants to be 90 degrees from hook shank. That is the most critical aspect of fishing a Demiki rig, in my opinion, from what I've found from experience over the years. You can do it with literally like any Kai-Tec ball jig. You can do it with any swim jig head as long as that eyelet is 90 degrees to the primary length of the hook shank. And when you tie it, you want it to sit flat. You don't want it to droop like this. If you're doing that, maybe rethink what knot you're using or just pull it back so it sits like this. 
up like that, it's likely not going to do that anyway. You want the thing dead flat. Tamiki rig is the better version of a drop shot at this time of the year, specifically for suspended smallmouth. This kind of comes back to what we were talking about at the beginning, where there is no clear, like, this is number one, this is number two, because it changes from day to day. And uh, I have... Hour to hour. Thank you. How <laughs> many times have we said that over the years? The years, even before Andrew came on, like, uh, in almost every video we've done over the last four or five years. How many times have I said that where smallmouth conditions, what they want, their preferences, everything changes day to day, hour to hour. Things like that matter. So specifically for suspended smallmouth, this is why it's number two on my list, or at least the second one that I want to mention, because it is deadly. You get to drop something just above their heads and just hold the damn thing still. And they hammer it. It is by far, despite how finesse this presentation is, and I've done this with two inch baits on a teeny tiny ball jig with a one on hook, and I've held it there for 90 plus seconds. Mm -hmm. I have videos of that on the channel where it took that friggin' long to get bit. And you'll watch the rod tip and you'll watch the fish in your graph and all of a sudden the whole rod goes Dum. It is not a gentle bite, nope. despite how friggin' finesse the presentation is. I was not at my first Demiki fish. I did not expect <laughs> that. <laughs> I expected it just to be like, oh, there it goes. It's just swimming off with it now. <laughs> no. <laughs> that thing, I, I don't even know. I don't even think I held it there that long. Maybe like... 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, probably. Because that, that day, that Tamiki bite was on fire. And there was a couple of fish that were like extremely opportunistic. That thing came up and it, it hammered. I was sitting there and all of a sudden it was just like, Kunk! I'm like, oh shit, dude, what the? <laughs> <laughs> when you get that dialed in with the electronics, you don't, like, you know, you look at the graph and you're like, okay, yeah, no, he's there. He's there. And then, then I just focus on the rod, even though I don't have to, but more I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, okay, how still can I hold this? Because for me, that's like the most critical thing. And like right at the moment where it feels like your arm is about to seize and snap in two, the whole thing jumps a mile. And it, it's just, I've been making this work. I mean, water temps to mid seventies down to upper thirties. You would have an idea. Oh yeah. Is that something we can share on the stream? Yeah. It's stupid. It's a dumb idea, but it'll work hundred percent. Yeah. Freaking awesome. What? Jaw jacker on the boat. Uh huh. <laughs> We're trying it, dude. It's gonna be so much. Fun. So we can do that because what we can do is lift up one of the side lids on the back deck yeah, and right put here. a strap or a bungee cord underneath it, then close the lid and lock it, and then just go over the top of the jaw jacker so it can't go just over the over the side of the boat and then just have it just waiting. Put the bells on it. Yep. Ping. <laughs> no, we really could though. Five pounder. <laughs> is that illegal? I don't. We're gonna have to look up the rules. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't see why not. Okay, we're getting off track, but I like, your, I like where your head's at. <laughs> As, uh, Kevin, I see your question. We're going to come back to that in a second. So, and Jim, great question. I'll pin that one second. Uh, one of the things I do want to say, what I've found, the most critical aspect about fishing a Demiki rig, keep it above their heads. Don't drop it down on top of them, like literally onto their face. If you're seeing them consistently at like 30 feet down, drop it to 25, no closer. I would say anywhere from 20 to 25 feet and play with it. And I would err on the side of caution and start at 20 feet, 10 feet above their head. Bring it down however fast or so you want. I don't care. And as soon as you get within 10 feet of their head, kill it and just hold the damn thing still. Put the rod on the deck. Yeah. And just keep a foot on it because they will hit it and they will take your rod. It, <laughs> they're it, not afraid of it. <laughs> no, they're not. And if you're watching your graph intently and you're watching your jig fall, well, your Tamiki rig fall, sometimes you'll see the fish like... We've seen it how many times now? We're in like 45 to 50 feet of water, and we're marking fish that are like three or four feet off the bottom. And I drop that to Miki rig, and it gets down just 10 feet below the surface, and all of a sudden that line comes straight up. <laughs> yeah. And it's wild, and they'll truck it on the way up. Plus side, you might get a bonus catch like I did last year, catch some giant trout if they're in the same body of water you're fishing. I caught a six and three quarter pound brown trout last year. That was ridiculous. And like... I didn't know how to appreciate it. I, I did appreciate it because I knew it was big, but I had no frame of reference for just how big that fish was that I couldn't truly appreciate it until Andrew was like, no, you don't understand. And then our buddy Kyle was like, really? Dude, <laughs> you that's don't like, understand. That's like, a, that's like catching like a seven pound smallie. And see, now that's perfect perspective. And I really appreciate that fish now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Demiki rig. And then going back to it. So Jim, 
I mean, wrong screen. Are you holding it at a suspended depth or at the bottom? I just answered that, but I'm going to reiterate it because it is that important. I'm holding it suspended above the fish. Dead stick the bait. With one exception. As the water gets colder, sometimes you do need to impart a very, very, very small amount of action into this. And this is where Andrew could speak to it much more um, clearly than I can and much more confidently because he does it better because a lot of this comes from ice fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just sit there and just like, you don't want to be going up and down like a couple inches at a time. You would just want to sit there and just, just pretty much let your hand... Well, I have a natural shake anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> let your hand hand just do a little bit of this. Just tiny, 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 tiny bit. You don't want that bait going. Well, where is it? You don't want it going up and down, up and down. They're, they'll just see it be like, yeah, that, that ain't natural. That fish shouldn't be moving that fast <laughs> this cold. Just just enough to get that tail, that tail moving. It'll go up and down a little bit, but just enough to get that tail just just wiggling a little bit. That's enough to get them to come up to bite it. Um, yeah, that's it. Kevin, I do see your question. I want to come back to it. Last thing I want to talk about with Tamiki baits. This is actually really cool. What I like about this, there's a whole host of different baits that you can do, and you can get really, really creative with it too. Beast Coast Fishing, their magic flick works phenomenal. Drop shot, Ned Rig, or Tamiki. The thing is, if I'm going to throw it on a Demiki rig, I typically throw it on something that's a ball head. So, obviously, it's a spherical face where the bait is going to come up and meet it. I will not only take a pair of scissors and, like, just cut just a little bit of the nose off of the bait. I mean, I'm literally talking, like, a sixteenth of an inch. But then I'll come in and I'll cut a little V-groove in it so it, like, really nestles up, up against the backside of the head and makes for a much more seamless bait. If you can find jig heads that have those like giant 3D eyes molded on the side, for some reason those do even better than anything else. Uh, Lead free bass jigs make some phenomenal ones. Those, uh, what the hell is the other brand? I had one right here. I think it's actually Damiki, the brand, makes some as well. They have, I mean, I have a Damiki underspin right here. So it's kind of along the same thing. Uh, that camera just is too far away. Well, you can, you can kind of see the red glowing there reflection of the eye but it's got big eyes in the head you know like anything like that doesn't have to be a ball jig the most important thing again hook shank to eyelet got to be a 90 degree turn and find a knot that works best for you that keeps it at that 90 degrees you want that hook shank parallel to the lake bottom you want that to sit as flat and natural looking as you can simple as that i mean we could go on and on all right and then i didn't continue about baits so uh, again, Magic Flick from Beast Coast Fishing has been my number one. That thing absolutely kills it. The 3.65 inch or the three and a half inch is their standard size, and that's pretty much all I use. I will literally rip through five or six different colors in five or six consecutive drops. Depending, like if I see a fish that's deep, and I'm like, "Yep, no, this is like textbook Demiki rig." I'll drop that bait down with one of my go-to colors is Bankroll. I'll almost always start with that, especially if it's in a lake that has a lot of smelt. I'll drop that down. If that fish doesn't even sniff at it, like zero reaction whatsoever, I ask him. I burn it right back up, rip it off, throw it on the deck, grab another color, and drop it right back down. Yeah, you know when he's Demiki fishing because there'll be like a, a half dozen freaking baits on the deck within five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just look back like, Jesus, dude, that pile is doubled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, for me, for smallmouth, like it's very much color-oriented almost more often than it is presentation. Like, you can go out there anytime now, and it, I could probably pick three baits off these that I know I'm going to get bit, but I might have to go through five different color variations on every single one of those before I figure out which one they really, truly want. And then once you nail down a color on one of them, <clears throat> you can usually adjust your color on the other two things and continue to replicate that success that you're finding. It's for, I don't know, for me, for smallmouth, it, more often than not, it's color more than anything. Uh, but lastly, on baits... So Magic Flick from Beast Coast Fishing, you can throw on little baby flukes. You can throw on, I don't have a package over there. I think it's the Mega Bass Spark Shads. The, mm -hmm. no, no, is that the, the thicker one? Um, Haze Dong. Haze Dong. The little like two and a half inch swim baits, baby flukes that I already say that. Like literally anything along those lines. Um, I would say no to the Berkeley like uh, Maxent Flat Nose Minnow or anything along those lines that is a very soft, supple plastic. Because when you drop it down, the tail's just going to droop and it's not going to have like a natural 
bait fish profile. So that's that's really what dictates the baits that I choose for a Demiki rig. That's it. Number two, Demiki rig. Um, Kevin. Tiago, you're right. Spark chats just don't work. No, they're dumb. <laughs> hey, South Jersey and David and Evan. Bisco, hell yeah, buddy. Let me know how that goes. Um, sorry, Ryan. Yeah, I and I'm placing another order of Beast Coast tonight. I need to stock up on a few more jigs for uh, Lake Ontario next week. Feeling really good about it. Uh, I have a couple of ideas. I have to tell you what I'm doing. You're going to be happy, but probably also very mad. <laughs> Throw a depths. Can I borrow yours? I don't give a shit. I'm not throwing it out there with musky, dude. <laughs> not happening. Musky, walleye, drum, pike. There's too many toothy critters in that lake. It ain't yeah, happening. Yeah, right. um, so, Kevin, coming back to jerk baits, what's your typical setup for a jerk bait? This is actually one where I, I don't typically like to deflect too much. Um, we had a phenomenal article from any bass addict, our friend David here that's in the chat, that we put up on our website, 603bass.com. I implore you to go read that because he did a phenomenal breakdown of what he uses for rod setups, and there it's much more involved and better explained that I can give you. I'm a schmuck. I don't have like like jerk baits is one of like the only te techniques I have. I don't have a specific rod setup for it. I just use a seven foot medium moderate fast and straight ten pound fluoro. They, they, there's a there's a science to it depending on time of the year and water clarity and what kind of suspending jerk baits it's doing, what brands. Like you can dive deep into that. Or you could be kind of a simpleton like myself and just seven foot medium moderate fast with straight ten pound fluoro. Perfect. <laughs> I used to throw fifteen straight fifteen pound. And it worked phenomenal. And it worked great. But go read his article. I, I seriously implore smart. you to read it. It is a phenomenal. You know what? Give me a second. I'll put it here in the chat for you. Uh, but to answer your other question, you guys ever run an underspin on your Dubiki rig? No. I don't know that I even want to try, but I'm kind of tempted to try it. But I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of the way we specifically fish it. That would just be that. That would just be that. Pretty much. Don't show them that. That's my specialness. Sorry. It's my cold water killer. Can't tell you everything. We tell you like 95% of everything we do, but there's like a few things we keep to ourselves. Um, yeah, because we fish tournaments once in a while still. <laughs> oh, wait. Ryan, when are you going to be on Lake Ontario? I'll be there next week. I'll be there Thursday night, the 22nd, probably closer to midnight, and then Friday the 23rd and most of Saturday the 24th. We'll be out there. And I think we're going to be launching out of Cape Vincent so we can fish either the river or the lake, sorry, river or the lake from my current perspective. Might go down to the eastern, uh, Lake Ontario, eastern access. He says he lives on Lake Ontario. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> How did I not know this? Oh. Okay, well, anyway, I'll let you know. Well, I just did tell you. I'll let, yeah, we'll be up there. We'll be there. I'll be up there with my buddy TJ, Smallmouth Freaks, going out of the battleship. <laughs> um... Ooh, okay. We're going to digress a little bit from the top five here because I like South Jersey's question. What's your big baits of choice when fishing in the fall in shallower water? Doesn't have to be just swim baits that count magnum cranks as well. Glide. There you go. I just like glides. I, I love throwing them. Yours, I have to say. I would like a big <laughs> crank down. It's right here. And I would absolutely throw the absolute bejesus out of it in the fall if I had one. But I'm not trying to spend $300 on a bait. Just waiting to see what the hell he's bringing in here. I hear rods. Okay, it'd just be easier if I do this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Shut that door. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Ah, choice number one. It's upside down, I don't care. Pats, baby. I'm throwing that. He's throwing pats. Wait, wait, wait. I can't do this. Too much. Option number two, I'm bringing the fire. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Piz! Shallow, cranking, crappie. Oh, look at that focus. I don't <laughs> even care that it's upside down. It still looks good. Oh, thanks. You had schmutz on your schmeg. That's number two. And then number three. As soon as I get there, hang on. Whoa. 
focus. Close I didn't enough. even think about soft baits. I'd, oh, I did. I would absolutely, yeah. CHR swim baits on Instagram. The Chuleta Jr. Let's throw Only those. I, the, uh, that one and the um, working class zero citizens. Yeah. I would absolutely throw those. And I will. And I do all the time. I throw them all year long. So I feel like in the summer, though, I get a bit a lot more on those soft body baits just working it like as a jig. And then later on the season when the water cools down, I get a bit a lot more on them when they're just when I'm actually swimming them back. What the hell was that? Oh, <laughs> damn right. I'm going to I'm going to pin this. Tap the rod in. Shh. That doesn't work. Uh, ooh, okay. And how do you like to work that on a slow retriever going faster or a mix of rod twitches after a couple of smooth bumps? That's you for the glide. For the glom? For the glom glom. Glom, 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 glom. <laughs> I, like, right now, I, I work the glide uh, pretty slow. Like, in the summer, I'll, move, I'll work it pretty freaking slow. Like, just crawling it over rock piles or crawling it over some, adding, like, a couple half fast half turns and getting it to, like, spin around a little bit and then continue to slow roll it and, like, maybe some sweeping or something. But colder water, I always like, like, getting coming into the fall, I'll start cranking it a lot faster, giving it more jerks, like, just kind of making it a little more erratic than just, like, a slow, steady retrieve. Just adding in a couple more, yeah, like, erratic stuff. <laughs> What about you? What do you like to do with your cranking stuff? I haven't really used any of the big cranking stuff. So right up, retrieve it. If I can deflect it, do I? It's literally a giant crankbait for me. Um, although the pats and the piz are a little bit more unique compared to my other big crankbaits or uh, diving swim baits, because they can actually be worked really, really effectively as a wake bait as well. Even though they're really kind of ideally suited for, well, I shouldn't say that. They do a very good job of shallow cranking as well. And the swim alignment is phenomenal, but you can use it either way. But for me, I like to just swim it. I like to bring it by shallow cover. If I can deflect it a little bit, awesome. As long as I can bring it by close enough. I've had really good luck doing that too. Swimming over the top of rock piles, outside weed lines, right down the side of logs. A couple of weeks, well, actually, no, shit, like a month and a half ago now with my buddy Travis Rocket. He was fishing a pats that he had just got, and he was just like, Maybe not quite waking it, like just barely subsurface. Like the back was almost sticking out of the water still. Really, really slow rolling it parallel to the very outside edge of docks. He ended up catching a bunch of fish doing it that way. So there's a number of ways he could do it. Uh, last question before we go back to the list. Using those in place of battle shads look good. Yes, South Jersey, spot on on that regarding the um, Chuleta. They're phenomenal baits. We've actually caught quite a few fish on those. Andy, what are your thoughts on and uses for 7.6 heavy medium? Wait. Medium heavy? Yeah, it'd be medium heavy. 7.6 medium heavy fast casting rod that you both would use this rod if either were to use that rod. Wait, what? Wait, who's in what's in? Having a hard time with this. Everything's backwards. Please rephrase your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's asking what would you use a 7.6 heavy, uh, medium heavy Wait, bring it back. casting rod? I would use it for a jig rod. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I got to put up that post, too. Hang on, Kevin. I got you in a minute. Um, all right, back to the list. Okay, so we covered number one was jerk baits. Number two, again, not that those are specifically one and two. Uh, number two is Demiki. Number three, this is going to be the biggest surprise of all. This is a real absolute shell shocker. Go ahead and start while I go ahead and get a link to there the stream. There it is. You know what it is already. It's a jig. <laughs> always, always have a jig. Um, see, these fish, when it starts to get cooler, they're going to move up for smallies. They're going to, they're going to find those like kind of deep. They're going to start finding those deeper rocks. If they're out suspended, they're going to move to the deeper rocks or like the bottom of the banks, depending how deep that bank goes. If it goes straight to the bottom in like 50, 60 feet, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be in there. Uh, working these like to have a fat, like, I mean, we pretty much use half ounce all year long anyway, so we don't really have to switch them up. Just your retrieve on the bottom becomes a little more erratic. Um, 
lots of dragging, lots of popping, uh, working them around big rock piles. It's pretty much the same same thing as the spring, just just the opposite end of the year. Really, I mean, you're still working a jig the same as how you always do. You just you don't really have to work them out in the middle of nothing now. Finding grass lines, you find if if there's boulders, deeper rock piles. Highly recommend throwing these. I mean, there's really no there's, throw a jig. <laughs> really. <laughs> The only thing, so one of the things I guess we really haven't talked about at depth regarding jigs, but we've talked about them a lot. So th this is going to be a quick point on this. We're going to move on because we really have dedicated a ton of time to jigs over the last years. 45% like of the streams have been about jigs. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for good reason, you know, a jig, I'll, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. You can fish them from ice out to ice in. I don't care where you go or what the bite is doing. 99% of the time. There have been a few days where they just will not touch a jig, but 99% of the time you can put good fish in the boat or at least numbers on a jig. And it bears repeating because it's that good. And if you're not throwing it, I implore you, implore you to throw it. Tiago, you just said it best, buddy. You're going right up on the chat. Where are you? There he is. Bingo, bango, bongo, the most versatile bait. It really is. So the only thing we're going to do now if we're fishing jigs from this point right now, you can use a really, really aggressive jig trailer, beast coast, flip and delight rage, uh, strike, King, uh, strike, King. strike King, rage, cross <laughs> strike King, rage, uh, menace, rage, bug, rage, bug, rage, bug. Uh, I mean, dude, you can do whatever you want, but I like something with a lot of action. The appendages we're talking water temps over 70 degrees for your surface temps. People, talk about like, Oh, what about this range of the water? People can only measure the surface. All right. That's what we talk about. <laughs> so as the water dips into say like 60 degree territory, now I might find something that's got a moderate amount of action, nothing crazy, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, net bait pack across are really good. Kind of like in that mid range, but most importantly, the appendages stick out straight. So when it falls, it stands up and the legs still stand straight up. So it makes it very easy to, to find. And then from there, as the water continues to get colder, then I'm going to use uh, trailers with less and less action in them with one caveat, twin tail hula grub. And it, it didn't really kind of click until just now why that works so good in cold water. The most obvious reason for why it attracts their attention on the fall is because of that swimming action in the legs. It, it's, I mean, they're just little twin tails, but they make a hell of a ruckus on the fall. And then when they fall, just like Andrew showed you, they fold. So to me, that really kind of represents like, kind of like, okay, I'm just, I'm just chilling here. Don't look at me. I'm just a crawfish and just leave me alone. But it saw it on the way down and now it's just this little thing sitting there. Somatis baits, bingo, chunk. Mm -hmm. Somatis makes one of the best chunks you can get. There's a ton of other brands out there that make the same thing or not the same thing, excuse me, same style for just like that overall bigger profile, nice, heavily salted, uh, salt scent, whatever you want out of it. Um, but it's just a complete dead action, but depending upon what brand you get either big or moderately sized profile to it. And that is like as good as you can possibly imagine for really, really cold water, smallmouth. zooms, uh, the zoom, uh, Come on, Sean. Super Chunk Jr. was my go-to for years. For years. And it, it literally has nothing to it. But it works killer. Nice profile and it just sits there. Kind of floats like, hey, it's going to hey. sit here. Depending on how you hook it. There's a little hey, wave in the air. Yeah. Like, you just don't care. Just hanging out. <laughs> and it, it's, it's phenomenal. So Eat me. <laughs> there's that. Oh, my God. So one of the things I have not brought up in a while. First off, wait, wait. We said jigs. I talked about trailers. Okay, we covered everything for jigs. There's number three. All right. One of the things I, I keep forgetting to ask the last like couple of weeks here. For those that are watching, first off, thank you very much. If you could drop a like on the stream, if you haven't done so already, that helps more than you know. Anybody that gets to this on YouTube after it's you know, after the live stream, it's just up on the channel. Leave a comment, like sharing comments on it. Um, well, sharing the video comments on the video likes on the video like those all help us immensely in the algorithm it helps push things out if you look at our most recent upload that got shared a lot and it jumped over 2,000 views in five days quick like that right there is the power of sharing it dropping a like on it 
and leaving a comment. All those three things combined do wonders for us. So for anybody that's willing to do that, don't tell thank you very much. Me. Screw you, David. <laughs> uh, and then second to that, anybody that's willing or interested to donate to the channel, we welcome it and we would greatly appreciate it. But by all means, not necessary. You can do it one of three ways. If you're set up to do it here on YouTube, right through the chat, that's one easy way. Or down the video description below is a link to both our Venmo and PayPal. Anything you guys want to throw at us is more than helpful. Um, we're just using it constantly to do upgrades to the stream and everything. Throw me some glides. <laughs> and that too. And with that in mind, thank you very much to Andrew's mom, Carla, Thanks, for the mom. donation. You're a champ. We she love you. doesn't make my mom do all the work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Um... Oh God, I gotta go back. I saw a couple of different comments in there. Panda. Oh, the old germ. Have you tried just putting that Ford Psycho to swim ball in winter? Hmm. Well, there is an idea I am toying with that's kind of along those lines, but I don't want to talk about it until I do it. Mm -hmm. I was actually at County earlier today talking to Gordy, and I told him exactly what I wanted to do. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> A little bit more elaborate than that, but yeah, we were talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, South Jersey. Have you ever seen the Depths Hula Paddle Tail soft plastic called the Tail Slider? I don't know really I have. I've seen a lot of baits. I don't the remember. one I had that Dennis gave me? the hell was that thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's that big thing. Wait, no. Depths Hula Paddle Tail. Mm, no, I think we're thinking of something else. I don't else. think that was the same one. I have to think about that. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Don't pan the wrong one. Yeah, the uh, one-ounce football jig was seven-ounce Sankos for backer rack. I can't wait to get down there. That that's place like, is, like, just unreal. They eat anything, so. <laughs> that's top of my bucket list for trips I want to do. All right, Andy, have a good night. I think that's number two for me. What? Oh, backer what's your number rack. one, then? My number one is not even for bass. Salt? <laughs> oh, yeah. Where? I want to go somewhere in Indonesia and just work those freaking islands. It's just like cliff face. Oh, You're yeah. standing on the edge of the coral, and it's like That's that guy you watch all the time, feet. right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. You should have seen the fish he caught the other day. I got to watch that. Oh, it's so sick. <laughs> dude, they're, they're using, they're literally using like shit for tuna on, on shore. Like yeah. right on the edge, and they're just like, okay, let's pull these freaking giant tuna up from... Right at their feet, it's sick. I want to do it so bad. Hmm. Like big poppers. Big, big poppers. Oh, yeah, that does sound fun. 100-pound leader. Like, mm -hmm. See, I'd be down for that. Mm -hmm. That'd be sick. Tiago, let's go. So I really want to get in on the Mexico trip with Big Bass Dreams because they're all going end of this year. Oh, yeah. My wife, she's never put her foot down, like straight up no on anything. There's a few things where like we both, all right, yeah, after... We talk it through, we both come to agreement. No, we're not going to do that. Well, <laughs> more specifically, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but other than that, bring like me it's, on the street smart. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mexico was a hard no, no room for negotiation from her. So I don't, I don't know when that's, when that's going to happen at some point. Maybe if you all write very kind letters to her, like you're writing to Santa, dear Mrs. Snover. Please let Sean come to Mexico with us. <laughs> She's going to come downstairs and be like, no. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. You're going to hear. Stop, 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 stop. I get a text. <laughs> Slap him. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. So we did number one was jerk baits. Number two was Demiki rig. Number three was jigs. I guess one last thing on that football jigs specifically. However, do not sleep on the Hustler from Beast Coast. They're hybrid from S-Jig. It's got a little bit of marabou hair tied with some just regular old skirt. Pair that with... I'm going to show them. I'm going right. to do it. I don't give a shit. I'm going to show <laughs> One I example. Taught people, I, sh I told people how and where I caught my PB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway, Jackal Rhythm Wave, 2.8 inch. Or actually, what I like better is the 3.3 inch. Throw that on the back of the Beast Coast Hustler. And hold on. You can fish it like so many different ways. We have done exceptionally well. This year, actually, it's kind of funny. We've barely thrown this. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's going to. Well, I did try throwing it the other day. 
before I, I'm pretty sure it's a bad spool line because I broke off my leader twice in four casts and I'm down two hustlers just like that, which sucks. But uh, all last year, we were killing it on that literally all year, ice out to ice in. Multiple, multiple, multiple four and five plus pounds, um, large mouth and small mouth mm -hmm. on that jig. Look at it. Okay, here's your number three. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. So number four was these guys. Top water. After you, sir. Top water is fun because you can, and especially in the fall, because you can just you can move these things a lot faster. Literally, just like walking the dog, like all over the place, just working normally like you think you should. You don't have to work in crazy pauses on them. I mean, you you do. You can. Smallmouth are super aggressive. They're gonna come up and smash it. Saving your elbow by I mean, moving that. <laughs> you don't want our guests to get drunk. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Come, do you know how old that thing is? That's older than my son, my oldest son. I'm not even kidding. I've I've been I've caught I don't even know how many smallmouth on that before my kid was even born on that exact bait, not like that model, that one he's holding. <laughs> it still has orange sharpie on the belly too. It's pretty impressive. It Sorry. works. <laughs> it does. Top water is just fun. I I love top water. Did you paint that? Nope. No, the top is still original. Only the bottom where I painted the orange on it. Huh. Top it's like sexy shag color here or whatever. Um try oh sorry, Michael, I saw your question. I'll come back to that in a second. So what I like about top water this time of the year is you know, kind of coming back to what we had said earlier too was they'll hit top water even out in like 60 feet of water. If they're suspended, they're only 25 people to the surface, they'll come up and slap that in the right conditions. Mm -hmm. And right now, this time of year, especially as we're getting these cooling nights and you're going to have to start, there's like a whole host of different things that can happen that would either make bait fish go to the surface or <laughs> either because they're alive or because they're dead or dying. And the smallmouth will see that, they see the silhouette, and they just come up and they crush it. So top water can take advantage of that. As the nights get colder and the, all these fish, even if they're deep, they pull up towards mainland points again. There's some really good areas that are like those transition points between the shallows and the deeps that they like, they really live in, in the spring, they come back to in the fall again. So as the water temps, I want to say, get down to like mid upper sixties for surface temps, they really start making that aggressive push back towards mainland points. And early in the morning, a lot of those fish push up aggressively shallow. Whether or not they're feeding at night, hard to say. But they're there first thing in the morning, and that early morning topwater bite is legendary for smallmouth in the fall. Mm -hmm. I will always have one tied on. Walking baits like this, the um, rattling spook, one of my go-tos. And that's I'm not sure what size that is. It's probably like your the average size, four inch roughly. Um, second to that, I will throw a popper. And if you really want to go aggressive, you can throw a giant wake bait too. And that will also get bit. But this is by far my best producing topwater bait for smallmouth at this time of the year. I think the only time I've ever gotten bit on a wake bait during the day was in the fall. And I never throw wake baits during the day. I know they work. I just don't like doing it. No, I hear that. Just I just save them for the night. Just They're my night fishing baits. I don't know. Yep. Because they work phenomenal at night. Glide Versus. during the day and wakes during the night. Like Sometimes it. it's the opposite, though. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it doesn't work out the way you always plan it to. But Yeah, but rarely. But, yeah, I mean, I well, in the summer, it's it's kind of like a grind for a bite for those big wake baits. Yeah. It's not always, like, that easy. Whereas, you know, you get into the fall, they're just so much more aggressive. They don't care about size. No. Um, Something's making commotion. They just want it in their mouth. I can't say what I want to say because we're on stream. <laughs> Shut up. I have an itch I need to scratch. <laughs> uh, all right, T-Money. Let me pin that as soon as it shows up in the other chat. I have two different chats going on. One's like the YouTube one, and then one's the Streamlabs one. Streamlabs lags a little behind. There we go. Hey, there you go. What colors do you typically use? So I think this is just like a sexy shad. I think that is. Like, I can't. I 100% sure because it's like 50 years old. But. <laughs> it, it was originally a chrome belly, it looks yellow like sides, blue shed. top. Yeah. But like either chrome or orange underside it has been really, really good for me or just bone white. Like my top water, 
is moderately extensive from overall experience. But the, the problem is, is that I did really, really well in it for years. And then I just kind of stopped doing it for the last few years. So I really never got to a point where I expanded on it too, too hard. But those were always like, literally, those were the two colors I'd throw. And it just worked phenomenal. I didn't have to do anything else. Either chrome belly, orange belly, or bone white. That was it. Straightforward. You could get way more in depth with it like you could anything else. But I don't know. For me, those three colors just work really well. But ain't Hopefully broke, don't fix it. <laughs> All right, so number four on the list was top water. Number five. You had picked number five. But not least. But not least, but it was number five on the list for our, our top five to mention. And Eights. here's the thing. Our, our honorable mentions are all number five. There's like a whole host of number fives that crankbaits got the nod over everything else. But trust me, there's more coming because <laughs> I know there's probably already somebody saying, how the hell did you not mention this? It's coming. Don't worry. I promise you we're going to talk about it. Because <laughs> we don't care about that. <laughs> so crankbaits. Crankbaits. When this those, is all you. When those small ways are moved up into those rocks, like five, six feet deep, eight feet deep, anything below 10 feet, I will find a crankbait. Shallower. Bait. Or shallower and and or shallower, I will find a crankbait that will make it down to whatever structure is down below them, whether it be sand or rocks or whatever the hell they're swimming around. And I'm gonna try and break the lip off of this crankbait. I'm gonna put it down there and I'm just gonna dig it straight down. And if once start once I start feeling rocks and sand or whatever the hell is down on the bottom, I'm just gonna keep grinding that thing and that thing is just gonna pile just pile drive down in there and smack off everything make a whole bunch of commotion and those smallies go insane over it they i've had smallies just like engulf a, a square bill like this literally this size just gone down the gullet a little that scary to get them out but <laughs> one of the coolest bites too because it feels like you hooked into a spongy rock because it stops but it's like uh <laughs> it, it's like you hooked into a rock that's got a two inch thick sponge on the like because it stops but it's like Neh. what the hell yeah. and then ah <laughs> it goes come, the other way they come up and they hit it <laughs> they think for about a half a second and then they turn around and try to go back the other way or they try and go off that way yeah or they swim at you so sometimes i don't know sometimes you don't even know you get hit until you feel their head turn and then it's too late they got it halfway down their gullet but this has got to be one of the most fun ways to catch fish in the fall. Just cranking and cranking and cranking. All of a sudden, it just stops. Ugh, even the small fish do the same thing. Even the even one to two pound fish will take these things and just stop you dead in your tracks. And it's oh, it's amazing. I you know what? It, Love it. You're, and you're spot on. It, it's very much like a bladed jig bite for a largemouth. Mm -hmm. And just like you can feel that like the vibration, and all of a sudden it's just. Boom, it's funny because when I, so I actually tried to make a reel just for Instagram to promote this stream and Instagram, or it was either, either Instagram specifically or my cell network here in town today was being a real pain in my ass and the video kept posting with static. So I didn't do it, but it, there was one clip in there where I was talking about, you know, everything we were, we had discussed last week for large mouth and this week for small mouth. And I was going through and I found one awesome clip of me working a bladed jig and you can see the rod just and it just stops and immediately like I go to set and my hand doesn't move. You just hear the, the braid slap through every single guy. Just <laughs> ding. <laughs> and it was a, it was a little over four pounds. I forget. It was like four pounds, two ounces or something like that. Large mouth. Mm. But, uh, yeah, no, the crankbaits, it, I, there's nothing I can add. Cause he put everything perfectly. You slap kinda, it off everything. You kind of want a rod. You I'm kind of, you do want a rod that will load up. Um, what the hell do I have? I think it's a medium moderate. No, the one that John built medium from heavy custom rods. Moderate, I believe. Maybe it's a medium. No, moderate. yours. That's a medium, medium moderate fast. Medium moderate fast. Because that was specifically built for cranking. for cranking. Yeah. And you, yeah, you want that like real spongy, like nice parabolic bend to it. Yeah. So you're not ripping the treble hooks out. I mean, there's some baits. I mean, like, you look at the hooks on my spook. This thing. <laughs> Those are stout hooks. You can set the hook on that all day long. And then you go to the polar opposite end of that spectrum and you go to like a Mega Bass Vision 110. Those are teeny tiny fragile hooks. If you set the hook hard on that, you're just going to rip them out uh -huh. or bend them out, break them. You want, you want to be able to have a rod that when, when they hit 
and you know they're going to hit. It's either you're going to hit a rock. It's, it's going to feel like you hit a rock and it just stops and it doesn't deflect. Or it's going to swim at you. At that point, you're just cranking to try and catch back up to it and then twist at the hips and just keep cranking and keep cranking and keep cranking. You're going to want to play them pretty easy because these hooks will rip out of their face pretty easily. Yeah, they will. But other than that, crank till your heart is um, full of smallmouth. <laughs> these things are freaking awesome. That's a – is this a new one? Yes. I like that. I know you do. That's why I specifically brought it out for you. <laughs> it's a great color. I like it. <laughs> and as far as colors go, match the hatch. Simple mm-hmm. as that. I mean, it, like a lot of these things really just match the hatch. Uh, but try and figure out what they're primarily feeding on. If it's mostly smelt, then, you know, anything in that realm of color doesn't have to be spot on. Just get really close to it. You're good to go. If it's perch, something with an orange belly. You know, if it, it's a, if it's a dead match, awesome. This one from Strike King, I can't remember the name of the color, but it's like blue, green, and purple, but it's got a big old patch of orange on the belly. That works phenomenal as well. Uh, and, I mean, that's that's kind of it, man. You know, dark stained water, darker colors, nice clean water, natural colors. If you're not sure what to throw for a color or size, I, I personally recommend going with, like, the 1.5 in, like, a natural, just, like, browns and blacks or like bluegill colored yeah like sean said find something like if you know what bait fish are in there if there's bluegill in there which there most likely will be bluegill in these northern kettle ponds throw something that looks like a bluegill yep um brian let me pin your comment buddy what size square belly are you using i like 1.5s on occasion i really like the kvd uh sorry this um striking kvd 2.5s those are my absolute favorite. I love that size. I can sling them on my two, like my actual primary cranking rod, and then my secondary one, which is a little bit beefier. I run 12 pound. Uh, the 1.5s. I need, I need a new reel, or at least I need to get the one I have tuned, because if I catch even that little mouse fart of wind, it it backlashes crazy, and I can't <laughs> get the distance out of it that I want. That 2.5 sails like a champ, though. Yeah. So I, that's me. I I prefer the 1.5s. When it comes to crankbait, size does not really matter. I I feel size doesn't matter. I will. Th- I I haven't really thrown the one the two fives that much. No, you're almost exclusively the one point five, yeah. and I'm almost exclusively the two point five. I've caught giant fish on the tiny little one. It works great. I just I need I need a better reel. I need dude. That Sitica I have on that is like thirteen or fourteen years old now, and I literally have not cleaned it or tuned it once. Throw the hyper mag on it. No, that's on my jig rod. <laughs> On my fourth jig rod. You have two more right there? Nope. Those are my spinning reels. Those are the new ones. Oh. Those are all being utilized. Sean, core 50 to 10 pound test. I like it. Um, Jersey, do you like any foiled balsa baits for the fall time or are you using flat side more or square bill? We actually had Epic Eric on earlier this year to talk about crankbaits, and he dove into all of that, and I learned way more about crankbaits than I ever thought I could in an hour and a half. There's a lot to it. <laughs> I, I like If you're even remotely interested in getting into crankbaits, aside from anything he, and everything he has on his channel, you should definitely go back and watch that Real on the Bass talk where we had him on. We should come back on. We really should. He said he would do it. We just need to reach out. We're trying to make that happen. It's fall time, so might as well. I know. We're supposed to get the swim bait scrutiny guys back on, too, to talk swim baits. But anyway, I digress. I pretty much just throw, like, the old school Rapala DT4s and DT6s and square bills. Like, that's it. Maybe that's why I haven't done as well with cranking the last few years as I used to do. Like, I like, like that was it. That was my go-to. I used to crush them on friggin' crankbaits. And then just I found other things I was doing better with, so I stopped doing it. And I never expanded upon what I had for my crankbait selection. So I just have a ton of square bills and those Rapala DT4s and 6s, and now I've got a bunch of striking stuff. I got some, uh, I think they're 8 to 10s, and then 12 to 14s, and then some like 16 to 18 foot models. Like, we've got a lot, but they're all kind of along the same lines. It's all pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh. I'm trying to think of, like, if there's anything. I mean, we covered that a little bit. Working in pauses, TJ. though. Is definitely something that you want to do with with square square bills specifically. Can I ask the question of when you're pausing it, are you just like crank, 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 stop, crank, or are you also working in little like crank, crank, and on the pause you kind of give it a little pump? I don't. 
I you don't just straight up pause? I straight up pause. I actually, when I'm cranking, I'm cranking, cranking, cranking. I'm smacking off the bottom. I pause and I leave a little slack. Ooh. So it, it comes straight up and it's not trying to do something different. So yep. I, I crank, 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 pause. I just bring the rod tip like six, six inches forward just so it has, it's just kind of floating there free by itself. Straight up. I like it. So, all right, to recap, we got everything. We start out with number one was jerk baits. Number two, and again, not that this is number one and number two. I'm going to keep reiterating that. But for the top five, the ones that we covered, number one was jerk bait. Number two was Demiki rig. Number three was jigs. Number four, we said top water. And then number five was crankbaits. So that's about as good as it gets for covering like the bulk of what you could do. But as we said, smallmouth is very, very situational, which is why I have smallmouth freaks comment here pinned because now we go into the honorable mentions and those are two things that are very, very high on the list with some caveat to it. Big bait time for me, a rig and swim baits. A rig should absolutely be in this top five. However, a lot of States have bans on them outright, or you can only fish like complete bastardized versions of what a true Alabama rig is. I think in New Hampshire, you can have three arms, one bait. Correct. Hey, two smart. dummies and <laughs> two dummies and one real hook in New Hampshire, which is like, what's the point? Uh, you well, go to places like you think of the ratio where it's going to bite. It's probably better than some other places we can go. You know, it, it might be worth throwing it just to see if it's really even useful or not. But I have the three armed. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about that. I want to buy like the one that with the five arm version we have. I want to buy that and a three arm smaller profile. Smaller skinnier. Yep. Yeah. And, and make that work as long as I can have two up top and the one down the middle. As long as I can bend the arms that way naturally without deforming the hell out of it, well, it's gotta be and weight. I can get the weights just right, that I'll make it swim right. Two heavier weights on the bottom. No, two super light up top and one heavy down the bottom. I oh, think I'd rather yeah. have the heavy one, the single on the bottom, versus two, because they're more likely than not going to come up from behind and or below. So I want that one single bait that's got the real hook on it to stand out and be an easier target for them. That's At least that's where my mind's going with this. Smallmouth freaks, you tell me if I'm hmm. dumb. <laughs> but so on the list of honorable mentions, A rig, absolutely on that list. Check your state regulations. They will not screw around with you on this. There's something about an Alabama rig that gets regulators all riled up. I'm gonna feel like that scene from the Joker. You throw one Alabama rig and everybody just loses their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So like <laughs> We're case in point. We're in Vermont. Vermont, you can throw a five-arm rig, but only two real hooks on it. And we were fishing right outside of Marina along oh, a bridge. Yeah. And I look back right after I just caught a fish, and I had just slung it back. And Marine Patrol came out, and dude, that guy beeline for us. And we're like, "How you doing?" He's like, "Hey, good. Hey, what are you throwing right there? How many hooks are on it?" Like literally, cut right to the He's point. Like, that I guy need was, to see that rig. Yep. He was like, "Pull it out of the okay. water. I need to see it." <laughs> Take a look. Here it is. <laughs> They Snap. do not it's mess. It's in the water now. Go find it. <laughs> <laughs> what rig? <laughs> you throwing an Alabama rig? No, I'm throwing a what rig? What rig? Yeah, exactly. What rig? It's gone. <laughs> See you. Oh, it's 30 feet down. There. Go find it. So check your state rules when it comes to things like that. Next up on the all I mentioned, big baits. Now, these are kind of baby big baits, but they're also like really common, really easy to find, and they work really, really well. Mega bass. And these are the six inch models. Um, I'm drawing a blank. What the hell are these things called? Mag draft. Thank you. Mag draft. Wow. <laughs> brain get there. So and, like, it's funny cause I have, uh, what the hell is it? The, um, burrito baits. What is that friggin' burrito bait? Um, Panda, help me out here. What the hell is that burrito bait? Swim bait. <laughs> the, no the, uh, the, the, the burrito gill. And now Bullshad makes them. Baca. Baca Gill. That's what it is. Thank you. My God, I am tired. My brain's not there. So what is that? Seven-inch swim bait? I caught a four-pound, two-ounce smallmouth on that last year in 45 feet of water. I, When they're hungry, as this water gets colder, they're very, very hungry. That's a big-bodied swim bait. And it's a single jig hook. It comes out the back, and it's definitely more towards the front of the bait than it is anywhere else. And dude, that thing inhaled it like right up to the head. And that, again, that's a big freaking swim bait for a teeny tiny mouth on a small mouth. Um, 
These work great. They're big but not too big. That treble hook makes it easier to hook them if they come up and kind of side swipe it or they try and broadside it. You're more likely to hook up with that kind of free swinging treble hook. Um, things like that. Big swim baits, absolutely on the list. Next up on the honorable mentions, you brought it out. You got to talk about it. Tube. Well, I just I saw it up the there and I was like, you throw it all the time. And I don't. So, <laughs> Tube, definitely an honorable mention. I, I saw the comment. Not Where is be he? afraid Damn. to crack this thing like two, three feet off the bottom. And you know what? This is a time of year we can have a lot of fun with that. You can throw that like on a three eighths, half ounce, even a three quarter ounce head, especially if you get the heads with the rattles in them. I mean, you can crack them. I literally have a rod that was specifically designed to crack half ounce and three quarter ounce tubes. And I use it for a whole bunch of different things. It is a spinning rod setup, but it, it works incredible specifically for that half ounce and up like half to one ounce, that rod is in heaven. It loves throwing anything half ounce and heavier. Even though it's rated three eighths ounce into three quarter, if I try and throw three eighths on it, it just, it doesn't cast much for crap. But my God, you throw a three quarter ounce tube on there and you crack it from 200 feet away, it does a damn good job of doing exactly that. Tube is phenomenal. There's a whole, oh my God, we could talk about this for a half an hour on its own. Uh -huh. You can go heavy right now, like I just said. You can also go really light. That's what most guys do, and that works exceptionally well. If you rig it up just right, say with like a 3 16th ounce head inside the tube, you get a nice spiral out of this as it falls. Nice slow rate. Then you can kind of pop it off the bottom. Looks very much like just a crawfish. And you're probably going to catch a, a pretty decent size lake or two. Yeah. Because they love tubes. Um, what else? Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so sorry, I'm going backwards. It's crazy. Check the regs all the time. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't a lot of help. South Jersey, that. JP, <laughs> uh, Mass Big Baits, South Jersey. Yes, thank you. The Baca. Um, David, I thought no A rig at all, no a -rig at all in New Hampshire. I'll be twisting some wire then. Yeah, you're going to have the three arm, one real hook. Because it's New no Hampshire. Law, because they will come and get you. Oh, yeah. New Hampshire doesn't look at it as a lure. They define it as an apparatus, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. A fish catching apparatus. It's not a net. <laughs> Dude, Mike's got hooks on keeps it. keeps doing weird things. That's funny because this bait has <laughs> twice as many freaking hooks on it. And this thing has even more. But this is okay. Nine hook points on this little bait. And that, that apparently is okay. But, you know, even having, say, two real hook points on a five-arm rig is not okay. Right. That thing will do way more damage than a rig ever will. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a treble hook on my a rig. Yeah. <laughs> there, take that, New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, Jim B, I'm seeing a lot of baby bass four inch swing around shallow. Good to match baby bass. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And no. All right. So. <laughs> Yes and no. Yes, because the bass are still going to eat baby bass, but also no, because what's most likely going to happen is you're going to have things like bluegill and perch and probably some other things, maybe some black crappie, pushing up, feeding on a little baby bass. And the bass are going to come up and feed on the things that are feeding on the little baby bass. It's so food chain. Food, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> so when I see that, I'm more likely to match to bluegill and perch than I am to baby bass. Although, honestly, any of them will work. Um. Going further down the list of honorable mentions, this was not on the list, but Grat, thank you very much for bringing it up. Binsky, blade baits. That is by far one of my best baits when it comes to cold water. There's no reason why you shouldn't be throwing it now. I have heard from way too many people that that bait excels. Just blade baits in general, I like the Binsky's myself the best, that it works really, really well even right now, even when the water temp's still in the 70s. So yes, absolutely, blade bait should be on your list. Moving down a little bit further, you can talk about this one because you have been sticking them on that. That and this go hand in hand. So you take that, I'll the take Okashira this. Okashira is, <clears throat> it has quickly become one of my favorite baits to catch smallmouth on. Um, I mean, for suspended fish, I mean, you could really just work this really any depth. If they're pushed up shallow, you could cast this thing up. You can, I mean, you can work this really as a jig too. We've and, literally caught fish on that from two feet to 50 feet. Mm -hmm. That is by far one of the most ver most versatile jig heads I've ever thrown. It's got the little propeller on there, but they're 
they're not equal sized. One is a lot longer. So instead of it, I think I said this last stream, instead of it or, um, just swimming straight with the prop swimming, uh, prop spinning, they're offset. So when this thing's swimming, it's kind of doing this. And you can imagine what it does to a swim bait if there's a swim bait on the back of that. It just makes it look alive and like it's swimming away. Working these, you cast them out. Say we're, say we're fishing suspended fish right now. And they're obviously going to be moving up towards the bank more when the colder it gets. And but right now, if you're not throwing this, you kind of you kind of screwing yourself because those fish are. I will work this along a bank. Like I will come up to the bank. You know, you're staring at shore. Turn ninety, and just cast it down the bank. Probably if they're suspended, say 25, 30 feet, work it five, ten feet above their head, and just slow roll it. They'll just, you don't even need to do anything special with it. Just slow roll. They'll come up and just engulf it. Straight line it. I mean, if you look at the last, not last video, but the video before, we were working kind of a bank. It was like a submerged point, kind of. Yeah. Um, depending upon where you're at, you are on it. It's either like a really slow tapering bank from one angle or from the other angle, it's like steep banks. <laughs> right. And I think we were on that steeper bank side. Were we? Uh, no, we were working no, like we were the, working the, the flat, slow tapered side. Slow of it. tapered side, but I, they were suspended down, or actually, no, they were all on the bottom. But the yeah, small anywhere. I mean, we saw them from like belly scraping to five feet off the bottom. Yeah, I think if memory serves correct, I they were they were. I was in thirty five feet when I caught that one. Yep. Um, Come on, eat it. I, oh, <laughs> oh, he had already eaten it. It was already in his butthole. <laughs> uh, I cast this thing out. Let it sink for, I think it, I think I counted it out to 10, 15 seconds. So it was probably in, I'm guessing, 20 feet down. I'm guessing, best guess. Um, and I just, like I said, just slow roll. And I'm slow with the spinning rod. I don't even remember what ratio my, I think it's six, three to one, I think. But elaborate why you were going so slow. Because you don't want it to lift. You want it to get down to where, where, what depth you're at. And if you're reeling faster, that, that line is coming. It's not straight direct from your rod tip straight to the bait. It's got a big arch that comes down. Because that, that bait's falling, and that line is slowly following it. So when you're slow rolling it, you just want it to keep the same. You start same reeling depth. it faster, it's, gonna, it's just going to pull it up. Yep. And I mean, especially with these, you, you're, you've been fishing the one eighth ounce head, mm -hmm. but we also have one sixteenth ounce heads. So yeah, that slow rolling keeps a very lightweight bait down where you want it to be. I'm guessing my rate would be probably like glacial. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Pretty much. Like no joke. It's like slow. On a six point, I think our reels are 6.2 to one. No, my, or maybe. My, uh, that is not my... Is that I lose real? Yeah. So I'm not exaggerating. Is the other one. Yeah, it's slow. Like, I, I watched him many times because I thought I was going slow. And this is the pace for a one eighth ounce head when you're down 35 feet. That you want it moving, but you want it to stay off the bottom, but you want it at the bottom. This is your pace. And the closer you get to the <laughs> boat, the slower you're going to want to reel. Yep. Just like with an A rig. You cast an A rig out, you count it down 10, 15 seconds. You want to just do maybe like, I think it's like one to two second turns. And then the closer you get to the boat, you're going to want to slow it down because the closer you get to the boat, if you're still reeling the same speed. That bait's going to start coming up and reel it straight to the boat too. Do not be afraid to reel it straight to the Finish boat it. at that same speed. Even, call, yeah. even if you're in 45 feet and you're working that thing close to the bottom, all the way up to the boat, crawl it. We've had so many fish, not necessarily even on Okashira jig, but even just swimming a swim bait, which we're going to talk about that in a second too, like literally at the boat. I mean, like a 200 foot cast and all of a sudden, like all the way, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then 10 feet from the boat, it gets smoked. I actually caught another big brown trout doing that last year too, but we've had plenty of big smallmouth, Okashira, underspin, just swimming a swim bait, blade baits, nothing on a 200 foot cast until you're 10 feet from the frigging boat and then they pin it. As they come up, they're like, hell yeah, pinpoint for that bait right against whatever the hell that thing is floating up in the water. <laughs> and then they crush it. That's why, like, figurating big baits for, for fish right at the boat works so well. Because that, that bigger fish is falling up and it comes up to this, some sort of structure. It could be a floating dock. could be a bass boat. That bass doesn't know. 
unless it actually sees the people on there. It's so focused on that bait that when you're sitting there figure eighting it, it just thinks that fish is confused and doesn't know which way to go. So then it comes up and eats it. <laughs> I don't get hey. a PB. It's a man to refund. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to refund me for. My time. I want my time back. <laughs> if he doesn't catch it, just give him a high five. <laughs> hey, you know what? I If I catch at least one five pounds or bigger, I'll be happy with the trip. If I don't break five pounds again on my fourth trip to Lake Ontario, I might not go back for a little while. <laughs> or I won't go back until the spring next year where I can just <laughs> snipe a bed like everybody else. PB, PB, PB. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh... All right, so the, the one of the other last honorable mentions here would be just swimming a swim bait. I mean, it's something as simple as this, Kai Tech. So, yeah, a little closer here. That is, if I can get it to focus, that's a Kai Tech Easy Shiner, just on a 3 8 ounce football jig. You can do a number of different swim baits on a number of different size heads and hook shank, si hook shank sizes, profiles, swimming actions, whatever you fancy. Three and a half inches, roughly, has kind of been the go-to for us. You can fish it like a jig. Just straight bottom drag, pause, bottom drag. You can hop it like a blade bait or a tube. You can just straight up swim it like you are a spy bait or an underspin, anything like that. It's, I mean, it's, it's that simple. There's no magic to it. Match the hatch. Keep your colors natural like you would a jig if you're in really clear water. More natural colors if you're really dirty dark water, darker colors. That's a thing that's worked from ice out to ice in for us as well. It's one of our go-tos. Um, although, I don't know why that wasn't higher in the list, but it wasn't. And then circling back to Okashira, kind of along those same lines, although the Okashira jig head, uh, by the way, which is from Megabass. It's the uh, Megabass Okashira screw head jig head, I think is exactly what it's called. Um, screw head jig. Yeah. By far one of the most versatile baits because, like Andrew said, you could swim it, you can hop it like a jig, you can do a number of things. You can just fish it like a dead rig and just let it fall, and it gets chomped regardless, any which way. Along that same lines, though, two other things that I meant to bring up when he was talking about it underspins with swim baits on it and spy baits. Like, those oh, are all. Oh. They're so good. And if you want something moving, but specifically work like that mid-water column when the fish are suspended, it's really, really hard to beat any one of those three things. And you should have one of those three things tied on there. All of it. I've only got a few hundred or five pounds on the screw head. It's not that cool. <laughs> I, I do that. I love them. I'm absolutely, if I could marry one bait besides the jig, for small it'd probably be the Okashira. I love that jig head. Actually, it's kind of funny. My biggest fish I caught... Last year on Lake Ontario, when I was with Smallmouth Freaks, was on that with a spark shad. That was my biggest fish. It was 4.8 something, I forget. Um, but yeah, like Still that. So, I mean, the swim bait, Okashira with a swim bait, underspin with a swim bait, spy bait. Like all of those kind of do the same thing where you can work the middle of the water column at different rates with slightly different profiles. But I mean, really, it's just a good mid water column moving bait that you can set the depth you want it to be at just by letting it fall and controlling your retrieve rate to keep it at that depth. Um, Okashira screw head and Okashira, Okashira head and Okashira screw head. Screw head has the prop, the other doesn't. Thanks, David. I pin that. Yes, you are correct, because there's one that's just essentially a swim jig head and then the one with the prop. The one with the prop is the one that we keep talking about. Um, coming back to this, fishing with JMH, which... By the way, thank you for coming out to watch the stream tonight, man. Greatly appreciate it. Do you guys mainly target smallmouth? Uh, it depends on the time of the year. Last year, I would say yes. I feel like he's, he's, he's like more of the smallmouth guy because you love catching smallmouth. I do. And until I love catching just giant largies. I wonder what it was because it was like I had already had like my big large mouth. I've, I've caught... I spent my whole life until like 10 years ago, I'm 37 now, where like it was just largemouth for me because that's all I ever did fishing with my dad, little John Boat, was fishing all these kettle ponds all over southwestern New Hampshire, and that's all we ever went for because that's all my dad ever really knew. And if we stumbled into some smallmouth, awesome, but it was almost always just beat the bank, throw in Texas rig baits for largemouth. And I really started to learn more and more about fishing for smallmouth, and then <clears throat> all at the same time still learning more about fishing largemouth. And then you stuck your PB, seven pounds, seven ounce largemouth, 
And it took me several years, but I finally stuck my new PB, seven pounds, five ounce large mouth, two years ago. And now, like, the chase for that really big large mouth in New Hampshire was like, okay, I got it. I would love to beat it again, but it's been a long time since I've caught, like, another big small mouth. So then that chase went hard for the last two years when we went for it. And it paid off big time. I reset my PB three times. Well, I tied it and then beat it and then beat it again. Andrew reset his PB like eight times over the course of a year. Because well, you, your previous PB was like 4.3 or something. 4.4. 4. No, like, that, no, no, no. Because that was. Oh, that, like, oh, yeah, yeah. To like to begin to before. Be, my, yes. <laughs> it was like low fours. And then we went out that, that one night to that pond, which Dave, you know which one we're talking about. And you stuck like a. Four and a half and then a four and three quarter. So even backing up before that, a couple weeks before that, we went to the little pond not too far from here, and you stuck that when we were out night fishing, and it was like four point four on the dot or four point four two or something 4. like that. Four point four four. Okay, and then so there was your PB, and then we went to that other pond, and you were fishing your boat, I was in mine. No, because we went and to then, the St. Lawrence River, <laughs> and then we <laughs> made no freaking sense. We come <laughs> couldn't catch anything over like four and a half pounds. Actually, I think that I caught my PB there, and then we came back and I caught my PB twice. Two you, days later. You didn't catch a PB yet. We both lost our PBs. I was the only one that caught one was over that four the pounds. The second year we went up? The second year we went up, you caught one that I think would have been your PB. Or maybe you did set it. I did because I have it on video. It was on live. You, Facebook Live. Oh, remember? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right. Then, okay, so then we came back and then we went night fishing that little place. Or, sorry, we went to the place, you and your boat, my boat. Yeah. And you beat it. And then two hours later, you beat it again. Yeah. And then this is all in the course of like. A couple of months, he beat it. Then we went to the St. Lawrence, he beat it again. Then we came back home, and he beat it two more times in the same night. And then we went out to that spot in Vermont, you beat it again. And then we went out there again last year, and you beat it again. Then you beat it again. And On then the you almost day. beat it again this spring. <laughs> in the course of the year, the man has reset his PB Smalley like eight fucking times. Meanwhile, I went from 2009 till friggin' 2020 <laughs> to reset it by .06 ounces. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> So anyway, do we mainly target smallmouth? I want a big large. No, I'm it depends sick of on the time. Freaking smallmouth. <laughs> not sick of them at all. I love catching smallmouth, but I want that. I want stay record small. Uh, stay record large mouth. Yeah, I'm me both. Pretty sure I saw it last year. I'm like 110 percent that I saw it last year, and I called him right after. I had to sit down. <laughs> I put my rod down. I saw the fish and I just put my rod down. I'm like, it's not eating anything I have. It was like that one that I saw four years ago now. And yeah. I, I've gone back every year to look for her to see if she beds in the same spot. And I went back twice after I saw her and the weather never played to my favor by the time I could get there. That thing probably. She's gone. The one I saw, dude, that thing had to have been eaten like two, three pounds, like a couple, three pounders just for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It turned and it Donkey. just went. <laughs> and then it just bah. swam bah. down bah. to the deep. <laughs> See ya. So, uh, uh, Mike, to answer your question, does New Hampshire have a closed season like we have here in the Hudson in New York? Uh, yes and no. The only so there's restrictions on how many you can keep per day and the minimum size. I actually think at one point in the winter there's a maximum size too. You can only keep one fish over a certain length, but I could be mistaken on that. Um, we do have a closed season from May 15th to June 15th. You can still fish, but it's immediate catch and release only for all bass. Mm -hmm. uh, that is like 95% of the time when 90% of the spawn happens. So it's just a way to protect the fish from all the people out there, all the social Close media heroes. It's called ice. <laughs> <laughs> so ice I, fish. I don't know what you're talking about, David. We don't know what this ice thing is. We, we just drive everywhere we need to to avoid it. <laughs> um, and then depending upon, like New Hampshire has... Designated trout ponds, designated uh, lake trout ponds, designated uh, Atlantic, yeah, what is it? landlocked Atlantic salmon ponds. Then there's like different kinds of trout ponds, and all those have their own restrictions. Rivers and streams have their own restrictions. But generally speaking, the only closed season for bass in New Hampshire is May 15th to June 15th, and it is still um, immediate catch and release. So there really is technically no like no bass fishing season in new hampshire at any point unless there is a specifically designated body of water 
that is restricted against like all fishing designated trout ponds like there's a there's a perfectly good glacial glacial lake like 25 30 minutes from here we can't fish it nope until fourth saturday april april yeah Oct starting october 16th is the first day so inclusive dates now october 16th to the fourth friday in april so when the fall bite turns zero on fishing. And those fish are absolutely munching can't put a boat on there you can't even put a line in there nope you're not allowed to fish them period um yes jim correct catch and release and artificial lures only no live bait during that clo the um may 15th june 15th so there's some light restrictions but otherwise new hampshire's got it pretty good and then you go to other states and it's like wide open for at least at least being able to fish all year and there's like bigger windows of catch and release um like vermont you can fish all year but their window for catch and release is a lot longer than new hampshire's mass i don't think it has any restrictions whatsoever do what you want maine i'm not sure <laughs> it varies yeah, they got laws up there <laughs> nah <laughs> nah <laughs> all right i don't know man i think we i mean was there anything else we missed on the honorable mentions no we we can keep going we we get we got the top five we got a handful of any others that could have easily been inside that top five i could argue that maybe one or two of those should have been in there but we still mentioned them that's it These just ones we like to throw if you guys got any last minute questions you want to throw at us by all means start sending them otherwise if you haven't done so please drop a like on the stream for those that shared any of the social media posts primarily facebook is usually where i get most of the shares from or if you shared the stories uh, i didn't do a post on instagram but i did do a story like any sharing of any kind thank you very much like that by far helps more than anything word of mouth is by far the strongest tool for helping anything grow so anybody that's going out of the way to do that thank you very much we appreciate you for doing that Drop a like on the stream if you haven't, please. Helps. Anybody watching this after the fact, when it's up on the channel, we're not live anymore, leave a comment too. Share the video itself. Like, all of that helps us. We're still climbing. Everything's going great. We're still striving towards our goals. Everything's been going uh, pretty damn fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, next up on the list, because I didn't fish this past weekend. Technically, neither one of us did. We didn't record anything. Um, so what we're going to do is take... Both of these, the top five largemouth, the top five smallmouth, turn them around, re-record into a condensed eight-minute version of both and go from there. Big Bass Dreams, thank you. We appreciate you. Hey, <laughs> thank you. And if you guys haven't, go follow Big Bass Dreams. Damn and right. And their show is tomorrow, I believe, at 9. Wait, did he already post? Did I miss that? What? He, well, they haven't. They, there was a little hiatus where they weren't streaming. But, ah. Oliver, tell me, are you guys streaming tomorrow? Now's the time to promote, sir. Do it. Do your thing. Do it. Do it. Do Does it. your fish have a name? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We are lagging. That. Come on. We are lagging. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Convince Sean Miller to come down. Eh, we'll see. But anyway, so we're going to try and do uh, like eight to ten minute condensed versions of both small mouth, large mouth. Get that on there. We're going back to Vermont this weekend because we are guiding one of our own clients. So it should be fun. That's on Sunday. Next week is Whirlwind. Uh, we will have the stream next week. I have no idea what we're doing yet. We'll figure it out. The following week, there is no stream because I'll be traveling for work. I'll be in Tampa Bay, Florida. Oh, my God. I'm not going to sleep. This is the beginning of the end of my sleep. Not that I really ever got any to begin with. But. Welcome. we <laughs> <laughs> be surviving on caffeine. Anyway, Oliver. You know what to do, buddy. If you are uh, if you want, go ahead. Tell people what you're going to be on tomorrow if you are. Otherwise, definitely tag me. I'll be near my phone and in cell service area this time, even though I'm coaching my high school kids tomorrow. I won't miss it. Uh, for everybody else that tuned in tonight, again, thank you very much. Buddy. Likes. It is your see turn. See you later. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we'll see you guys next week at 8 o'clock every Wednesday at YouTube.com slash 603Bass. Very nice. I can nailed it. I, I will give a caveat. No, I take that back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for channel members, I'm going to put up a post. You guys can vote on what you want. Oh, you ruined my exit. <laughs> no, no, no. We're going we're gonna to come back. I really hope I didn't. Aha, never mind. I know exactly what next week's show is going to be because I have my handy-dandy calendar. I put everything in there. Next week, we have Steve Estes from Bass Fish and Electronics, New Hampshire-based company, coming on to talk about all things electronics on the boat, as well as something I had asked all of the channel members 
what they wanted to see in the upcoming episode. And they were, they specifically wanted to talk about like accessories in the boat, not oh, yeah, necessarily yeah. like electronics, but like other things that we have for tools and or accessories that normally you wouldn't talk about. So that's like a perfect time to talk about with Steve when we have him on there. So keep that in mind for next week. Everything electronics, boat accessories, have your questions ready. We're going to have a lot of things to talk about. Okay. Anyway. Hi, <laughs> welcome to 603 Bass. <laughs> I derailed it. I'm sorry. You did a great job. Now you got to do it again. We will see you guys next week. Have a good night, guys. Later. See you.